Hello and welcome everybody to this noob friendly Unity tutorial on how to make a 2D platformer inside of Unity. You will need Unity of course, free version is fine. I recommend using a version that is um, above 5 so you get the new UI system. You'll also need a empty scene to get started and patience to bear with my stupid accent. Okay, I will try to explain everything I do as much as possible, however I might accidentally um, forget something so if you get confused or you are uncertain about uh, some piece of code please look at the comment section below for help starting this episode we will start by creating our player and we'll get everything ready to start scripting in C sharp okay so without further ado let's get started right now we are going to create ourselves some folders inside our unity project so um, go ahead to the project window here right click in there create new folder and I'm going to call this one prefab I'm also going to create another folder called script and while we're at it another folder called scene now make sure they're all separated um, whenever you create something inside of that project window here the changes are being reflected in the um, Windows Explorer as well so say you choose your scene folder or any folder and you do show in the explorer you will see that uh, you have the exact same replica of the of your project window so the project window basically just reflects what is inside of that folder and that is my project folder assets so everything that is inside of the asset folder is going to be replicated here let's do a test we're going to create ourselves a new text document that we'll call hello world you don't have to do this but just for the sake of showing and now we go back inside of unity as you can see it has um, it has updated the project window and now you can see the new text file that we just created if I remove it here and I go back inside of my Windows Explorer it's gone so this is the exact same thing okay um, we said that we were we are going to uh, tackle the controller first, well the player. So what we'll do to get everything ready to start scripting is um, we'll go ahead and create a new game object, new 3D object, and we'll start using a cube. So I like to start testing my controls using a simple cube. I know this is a 2D platformer we're making, but we can still use a 3D object because Unity is going to allow us to do so. So um, take your cube that you just made, you can select it from the R key window over here and put it at the origin of the world so um, if you expand the transform component here you can see that the position is not 0 0 0 so change that for 0 0 0 just like this and now it is at the center of the world I'm also going to rename this object for player object or just player now what I'm going to do next is I am going to click and hold drag and drop this inside my prefab folder just like so so now what we have is we have created a replica of that object that we just made we created a replica inside our prefab folder that we can instantiate at any time so say if, if I was to delete my player here I can still drag and drop uh, him anywhere on the map and it's going to have the exact same settings I've put so the name player as for the position this might change so let's put that back on 0 0 0 and we are also going to remove the box collider on top of it we are not going to use the box collider for this uh, 2d platformer we're going to, to use something else called the character controller so in order to remove a component what we'll do is we will right click on box collider and we'll do remove component now make sure you hit apply over here this button apply only appears if your object is a prefab now what we have did right now is we've just applied the modification we made to that object to every single instance of that prefab say we were to have multiple of these player cube inside our map and we were to have say just any kind of, of um, component so maybe a audio listener and now if you look at the at the scene 
player has no audio listener. Player 1 does have one, player 2 doesn't, player 3 doesn't as well. So if we go back on player 1 and we hit apply, now you can tell that every single of our instance now have audio listeners. So let's remove these three, remove the audio listener as well. So right click, remove component, hit apply, and we're going to add a character controller component to this. And this is um, the character controller is also a collider that we don't see very well right now. Let me just turn off the light. And it's really hard to see, but as you can tell over here, when it's green like that, it means that it, it is a collider. So right now, it is a simple sphere collider right on top of our cube. If I put the height back at 1, we can't really see it. I'm, I'm going to turn off the mesh renderer. So it looks like that. So this is the collision of our player. This is what is going to make sure that he doesn't go through walls and fall through floors. Okay, so let's hit apply on that. And we are now ready to start scripting. So to start putting some um, commands on our player so he can start moving. Okay, so we're done for now. Next episode, we're going to start listening for inputs on the keyboard and also on the mouse. Um, we're going to start by keyboard only. So say you're pressing a, a specific key on your keyboard, then we're going to send information inside our Unity engine, and we're going to display stuff. It's going to be used later on uh, when we want to move our player around. So say we're pressing uh, the arrow keys and we want our player to move, then we can use that mechanic we're going to make in the next episode to send comments to our cube to start moving, basically. Okay, so I'll see you guys in the next episode.